guys welcome to the end of the cover channel this is Suzanne and today we are talking wallflower and rakes um, which is one of our favorite historical romance pairings so it is historical romance week on under the covers uh, we have many fantastic author interviews which um, you need to check out we also have two historical romance bundles that we're dying to give away and today is the last day to enter the giveaway so please 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 check out below see how you can enter because um, you need to do it pretty damn quick to be in with a chance of winning so today's video we are um, going to give you some recommendations of our favourite wallflower and rake pairings so myself Francesca and Annie will each go some of our through some of our favourites so I'm going to start us off and of course I'm going to be starting with one of Under the Covers absolute favourite all time authors and that is Lisa Klopas so the book I'm sure you won't be surprised to see is Devil in Winter by Lisa Claypath, which is the third in her Wallflower series. I would say this series is best read in order, however I do know many people who have read Devil in Winter as the first book in this series and then went back to the first book, so it's kind of up to you. Um, kind of what order you would want to read this if you haven't read it already. So a bit about Devil in Winter which is one of my favourite um, romances. Um, it's got Sebastian who is our dissolute rake and then Evie who is our wallflower. So although Evie is quite attractive she is kind of clumsy and she stutters. Um, she's lived under the thumb of quite a, an abusive family so she lacks in confidence as well. And then we have Sebastian, who I've, who I've said is a rake. Um, he's done some very, very bad things in the previous books. So when, if you've read, this is why it's kind of good to read them all in order, because you'll have the full history of kind of what Sebastian's done to your Evie's circle of friends before you get to this book. But needless to say, he is a selfish, he's kind of selfish. Um, he's, he's obviously a rake. He's very debauched. Um, he's very kind of disillusioned with the world um, he's got an intelligent and restless mind which never seems to get much use um, he's used to he's used to using people and being used in return which is exactly how the relationship between him and Evie starts so they both kind of need each other for something Evie needs to escape and, and I guess Sebastian does as well um, so they agree to run to Gretna Green and get married um, so they, um, Evie can have a bit of protection and Sebastian needs some money. And then the kind of relationship blossoms from there. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic book as you see them come kind of closer together even though they are such different characters um, they both kind of fulfill something within the other person. Um, it's a really really great romance I highly recommend you read it but I kind of recommend that you read it within the series so start with book one Secrets of a Summer Night and then work your way to Devil in Winter it is well worth it. So moving on to my second book and that is The Many Sins of Lord Cameron by Jennifer Ashley which I think is the third in the Mackenzie series. It might be the fourth, but I think it's the third. Um, and it features Lord Cameron, who is, a, is very much a ladies' man, and Ainsley, who is a widow. Um, what I really like about this book is that kind of Ainsley is her own woman. She knows who she is. Jennifer Ashley writes some fantastic heroines, and she does no different in this book um, and then we have Lord Cameron of course who is kind of like a really he's a Scottish hero and he's kind of like this really manly man he likes horses he likes women and he likes drink um, and just seeing these two come together um, they both have kind of traumatic pasts especially Lord Cameron so they both have some issues with trust which by the end of the book are fully resolved and it's just a really great story and I highly recommend you give it a go. The next book I want to recommend um, is one I read quite a while ago but it's just so much fun I really really like it it's called The Perfect Rape by Anne Gracie um, and it has a rake hero and a wallflower heroine of course um, but it's really light-hearted and fun so kind of the sins the sins of Lord Cameron and, and Devil in Winter they're, it's, they're quite 
serious, a bit heavier books, whereas The Perfect Rake is just a lot of fun, it's quite light-hearted. Um, and what I really liked about this, so we have our heroine Prudence, um, who has some younger sisters who are both very beautiful and she is considered the plain one. And then we have our hero who I think is called, is it Gabriel or Gideon? I think it's Gideon. So we have Gideon, our hero, who is a renowned rake. Um, and what I really loved about this story is that he considers Prue the beautiful one in the family and he sees her younger, more conventionally beautiful sisters as kind of plain and, and he kind of feels sorry for her that she kind of has to look after her poor sisters. Um, and it was just, it was just really sweet. I really, really enjoyed this book. So if you want something more lighthearted, fun, uh, definitely made me laugh, then The Perfect Rake by Anne Gracie is definitely the one to read. And then the next book, which I have really, really enjoyed it, love, is Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake, which is a bit of a mouthful, um, but it's by Sarah McLean and it's her first in her Love, in, love by Numbers series and I love this book, it is so fantastic. So we have Callie, our heroine, who is very used to being a wallflower, she's a bit older um, than heroines that you tend to find in historical romance, but she's kind of sick of becoming being a wallflower and she has a list of things that she wants to do, um, and this list of things are traditionally things that men would do, so things like riding astride, going to a gentleman's club, going to a pub, um, and then the last one um, is kissing a man. Um, so she does the first, she does kissing a man first, and the guy that she chooses is a renowned rake called Gabriel. I'm sorry, I've completely forgotten. I think it's Gabriel, um, and she's and it's um she's been ha kind of crushing on him for a while, um, and in the end he helps her try and fulfil her list, and of course they fall in love along the way. Um, it's a really great read. It's really funny, really sweet, and I just really really love the heroine in this. Callie is fantastic. I love how she kind of goes for what she wants um, in, in this book, despite her kind of despite it kind of going against the grain going against what society expects she kind of goes for it anyway um so those are my recommendations um i hope you like them and we'll move on to the next the next book that i want to talk about it's actually a whole series that i think does the rakes and wallflowers for the most part really well uh, most of the books in this series have that sort of theme and especially when it comes to rakes these books are a little bit on the darker side of a storyline and that is the house of rohan series by ann stewart this is one of my favorite historical romance series and that is because of that dark little bit of danger element that it has and this is book one and while it's not my absolute favorite i think you definitely have to read them in order my favorite is actually the book that goes um, forward in time. I think it's book three, and it's the son of this couple. But the House of Rohan is basically about mainly a secret society of aristocrats that go to this club, in a way, to indulge in all their carnal fantasies. So book one is about Francis Rohan, and like I said, he's the leader of this secret society. And the heroine of the story, her family is actually quite down on their luck financially. And the sisters get a lead that their mother is at the Rohan household. So Eleanor goes to look for her mother and she finds a lot of things she was not expecting because she stumbles across this rather crazy display in her eyes of sexual desire. And while Francis has said that's pretty much all he cares about in life is satisfying those carnal desires, he finds himself quite attractive to Eleanor who wants nothing to do with it. So this is a great example of a rake and a more demure kind of wallflower down on her luck heroine, but also the whole series. So I highly suggest you check out the whole series. Another one that I think it's actually quite fun and maybe a little bit lesser known is author Jennifer McQuiston. And not the whole series would be rakes and wallflowers, but I highly suggest you check out the whole series. The first book actually would fit really well if you're playing Roman Sapoli for Mayfair. But I'm here to talk about book three in the series, and that is the Seduction Diaries series by Jennifer McQuiston. And the book is The Perks of Loving a Scandal. And this has a bookish heroine, so she loves to read and she loves her romance novels. 
and she's kind of on her way to being a spinster. The hero is obviously a scoundrel and they find themselves in kind of a compromising position as it's oftentimes the plot with some of these historical romance novels. But the interesting and fun part about this one is that they were found in that position while they were overhearing a plot to kill the queen. So they are trying to figure out throughout this novel how, who was it, and how to stop them. So while it's really a fun story with a really fresh historical romance voice, it also has a little mystery and intrigue with the spy plot. And another one that's quite fun is When the Scoundrel Sins by Anna Harrington. This is another series that I've been really enjoying and Anna Harrington is an author that I look forward to reading all the time whenever she has a new book out and I discovered her recently a few years ago. In this one we also have a bookish heroine and she had a scandalous encounter with one of her childhood friends, I would say her childhood best friend. However, now to inherit her home, she has to marry before her 25th birthday and she has to find a husband. So it's going to be a marriage of convenience and she's enlisted her former best friend to help her find the perfect husband to have an arranged marriage. This is another one that I really enjoyed as a best friends to lovers. Obviously he's fighting the fact that he has to find her a different husband, but he doesn't want to marry her himself because marriage has never been in the cards for him. It was just a really fun story and I can't say enough great things about Anna Harrington's writing. So if you have not checked her out yet, definitely put her on your list. Hey guys, it's Annie. So now it's my time to share my favorite rakes and wallflowers recommendations to you. So I have three here that I want to recommend. Uh, the first one is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton and this is by Julia Quinn. So this is part of her Bridgerton series. It features a fun-loving family. I would definitely recommend reading this entire series, but if there's one book in this series that you're going to try out, it would be this one. So this is a romance between Penelope Featherington and Colin Bridgerton. And the reason why this is my favorite of the books is because uh, Penelope is really one of my all-time favorite heroines. I love the fact that uh, she has a kind of quirky personality, but she's also quite shy at the same time. Uh, there's something very endearing about Julia Quinn's characters, and I definitely think that all her heroes and heroines definitely have their own kind of quirks that make them special. The romance between Penelope and Colin grows very naturally um, in a very believable way. Another series that I absolutely love is the Maiden Lane series, and this is by Elizabeth Hoyt. Um, I love Elizabeth Hoyt's writing. I think that she has a different style of writing than I think um, authors like Lisa Clay Pess or Julia Quinn or Tessa Dare have. What I like about Elizabeth Hoyt's writing in this particular series is that she kind of goes for the suspense side um, as well as going for a little bit of a darker tone. So in the first book of the series, Wicked Intentions, you have a hero named Lazarus Huntington and you have a heroine named Tempest Dews and she's very overworked. She is kind of stressed out and she's in a place where she doesn't think that anything good is going to happen to her until she meets Lord Care. So Lazarus Lazarus comes in and kind of sweeps her off her feet. I would definitely recommend this book because it shows a different side of London that I don't think gets shined upon often. And along the same lines as the Julia Quinn recommendation, there is Tessa Dare. And within that, she has a book called Any Duchess Will Do. And in this book, Griffin York does not want to get married. He has no intentions for it. Um, however, he is kind of pushed into Spindle Cove, which is a place where a lot of spinsters go and there he encounters Pauline and that's really where the romance begins. Griffin is your typical rake. His personality is one of my favorite things about this book and he kind of brings out the best of her. So these three are my top recommendations for Rakes and Wallflowers. I'm a huge historical romance lover and I think that if you try out any one of these books that you wouldn't be disappointed. So those are our recommendations. Let us know what you thought of them. Are there any books there that you've read or that you will now consider reading? And do you have any recommendations for us? Please let us know in the comments. So as I said at the beginning of the video, we do have two historical romance bundles that we want to throw at you. So go, please look below to see how you can enter. It is the last day of the giveaway, so you need to get in there pretty quick. Anyway, thank you very much for listening and we'll see you in the next video.